this week's constellations, Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, and Draco. This is a shot of part of the sky that these three constellations are in. Over on the left, Ursa Major, you may have known that group of stars as the Big Dipper, but they belong to Ursa Major. Near that in the sky, something you may have known as the Little Dipper, these stars belong to Ursa Minor. And starting off as a line of stars between the two constellations and then wrapping around Ursa Minor are the stars that belong to Draco. There's one more star I like to add that actually belongs to Hercules that completes the nose of Draco. So those are the three. We'll look at these three constellations from different angles because they appear differently at different times of the year, different times of the night. There's Ursa Major, or at least the Big Dipper part of it, from a different angle. If you include some more stars, you can see the nose of the bear. Here are the bear's back legs, the front legs of the bear. It's not a very skillfully drawn bear, but it works with the stars that are up in that part of the sky anyway. In this view to the left of Ursa Major is another constellation. Over here a figure that looks like a kite or a dented ice cream cone. That's Bootes, a constellation you've either studied or will study soon in this class. And to its left is Corona Borealis, the northern crown. So other things in this part of the sky. Here's another angle, looking at the three constellations again, the three major constellations for this week, that is. Ursa Major down here, Ursa Minor there, and Draco there. We have some stars to learn in these constellations. We'll start them. This is Dubi, Mirac, Mizar, the bend in the handle of the dipper, which is actually a double star. Uh, the other one has a name, but we don't bother to learn it in this class. And then Alcade, the end of the handle of the Big Dipper, or the end of the bear's tail. Dubi and Merak you use as pointer stars. They point to Polaris, the North Star. If you go draw a line extended from Merak to Dubi and keep going, it hits Polaris up there. And Polaris happens to be the end of the tail of the Little Dipper, or the end of the handle of the Little Dipper up there in Ursa Minor. And other stars in Ursa Minor to know, one of them is down here. This is Kokab. It was the pole star at one time. And also in Ursa Minor, the other star in the bowl is Furcad. It's not uncommon under skies that aren't particularly dark to only be able to see Polaris, Kokab, and Furcad and the other stars in the Little Dipper just too faint to see. But if you know how to get to Polaris from Ursa Major you can find the Little Dipper most of the time. And here's Draco again. One star to learn in Draco. That's Thuban right here, which is another star that was the pole star at one time, about 3,000 years ago. Back to Ursa Major here, we're going to look at some deep sky objects in this constellation, or 
nearby this asterism anyway. Turns out the first one doesn't actually belong to Ursa Major, but it's nearby. It's within the area of the circle here is M51. This would be Messier Object 51. And this one happens to be a galaxy we look at just about face on. This is a spiral galaxy called the Whirlpool Galaxy. A range of estimates for distance to it, but they average to about 23 million light years away. You can see this in binoculars and small telescopes. To the left there is a companion galaxy that's actually separate from the Whirlpool Galaxy and it's more distant and you may be able to figure that out by looking at this picture. And this one is actually in a neighboring constellation but it's easiest to find off the tail of the dipper there. Another deep sky object in this part of the sky is M101. And that's up above the two N stars on the handle of the dipper there, Mizar and Alcade. And in fact, Mizar, Alcade, and M101 form an equilateral triangle that's fairly easy to trace out. And that's how I usually find it when I'm looking for it in a finder scope. And there's a picture of it. You can see it's another spiral galaxy looked at face on. This is the Penwheel Galaxy, about the same distance away as M101, or M51, excuse me. Another good thing for small telescopes. Larger galaxies in the Milky Way, so that would be impressive. And this one has about five companion galaxies that are interacting with it and causing star formation. Where you see the bright clumps of stars in this are where new stars typically have formed or are forming. And this one actually is within the boundaries of Ursa Major. Other things, M109 down here, pretty close to the bowl of the dipper. And then a couple others, M97 and M108 below the bowl as well. This is M109, another galaxy that we're looking at, spiral galaxy. This one's called a barred spiral galaxy. And it's the same type that the Milky Way happens to be. 83 million light years away. That's roughly four times as far away as the other two that we looked at. So it's going to be quite a bit fainter. And this is less than one degree away from Fecta, which is one of the stars in the asterism of the Big Dipper. So if you find that star in your telescope and move just a little bit off of it, you should be able to find M109 that way. This is M97, the Owl Nebula. This one isn't a galaxy. This is part of our own galaxy. It's a planetary nebula, that last stage in the life of stars like the sun, where it's puffed off its outer layers. This one fairly nearby, 2,600 light years away. You'd have to have a larger telescope than we typically take out to be able to see this as an owl, and you also need a filter that shows it. And finally, here's M108, another galaxy we're looking at, spiral galaxy, but we're looking at it edge on, so it doesn't look so much like a spiral. And this one, 46 million light years away. Pretty faint. Probably couldn't see this in binoculars, maybe larger binoculars you might be able to, but uh, probably not our 750s. But the telescope should pick it up pretty easily. That's it for Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, and Draco.